Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're gonna to talk about the difference between a regular humbucker and a mini humbucker. This has been a super requested video in this series about difference between various pickups. Uh, if you haven't watched any of them, we've got a few of them here. Uh, maybe I'll make a playlist and we'll put a little link to it up here. Uh, my name is Dylan, this is Dylan Talks Tone. If you're new to this channel, we have like 540 something videos all about guitar tone, tech, setup, all kinds of fun stuff about guitar stuff. The difference between mini humbuckers and regular humbuckers. Oh, what's in the cup? That's been the question lately too. Today we're drinking coffee. Uh, this is from a little place in Michigan. A friend of mine owns it. Owns it. Uh, if you have suggestions or want to send me some coffee to try, uh, let me know. Put that in the comments too, because I love all kinds of different coffees, scotches, bourbons, lots of stuff. Okay, so in order to understand the difference between all this stuff, we need to look at the history of everything and understand why there were different changes made. This video is gonna be a little involved because we need to talk about the history of the pickups, we need to talk about the each of the types of pickups and then the differences between them, why we get the resulting sound, okay? So just buckle in and here we go. We need to understand first that before 1956, 57, there were no humbuckers. There was only big single coils like for instance, this P90. Seth Lover came along and he said, you know, they, they hum a lot and we need to figure out how to get rid of that. So let's take the 10,000 wines that are on the P90, let's split them into two coils, run them out of phase of each other, and that will cut the 60 cycle hum mostly, and we will have a quieter humbucker or quieter pickup. We will be able to buck the hum, thus the humbucker. That was the first one. Later on, when Gibson acquired Epiphone. They were already using another version of the humbucker, the mini humbucker, in, looks something like this, in a guitar, for example, like an Epiphone Sheridan. The only reason it ended up going into like Les Pauls and stuff later is because when they switched over to the regular humbucker, they had a bunch of these left over and had to do something with them. Hey, let's put them in Les Paul Deluxes and let's uh, get into some Firebirds, which we'll get into in a minute because there is a difference. There's your little time frame. Now, let's talk about the actual differences between the regular humbucker and the mini humbucker. First of all, we're gonna look at a breakdown of a regular humbucker. We've got the screw side of the pickup. We've got the slug side of the pickup. So one of those is gonna be a north, uh, on the north side of the magnet and one's gonna be on the south side. So you see how the screws go down below the pickup okay and the slugs go down below the coil below the coil on both sides and then there's a single magnet that goes in between there now on either side the left and right side of that magnet so one's north up and one's south that is how you get your humbucking we could do a whole nother video about humbuckers and how they work and what the electronics of all that is a lot of people call these pickups pafs this has been blowing up my comments like lately like questions you know about pickups what does PAF mean? PAF stands for patent applied for. So when Seth Lover first invented this pickup, uh, he didn't have a patent for it yet. So they put an application in and all the pickups before that patent came out were called patent applied for pickups. They were the early ones, 58, 59, 60, right in there. Uh, they're pretty sought after money wise today. They're, they're kind of expensive. Are they super special? No, not really. Um, I mean, they're everybody wants to think that they're this like freaking grail of a pickup that but I mean we make really good ones in 2019 2020 in the 21st century that sound great and with modern materials like we could get into the whole vintage pickup versus modern built pickup in another video if you want I mean we could talk about that too but that's a whole nother ball game a whole nother another conversation for another day when we look at the PAF style pickup the full-size pickup one of the main reasons it's different is because of the size of the coil. So if you look at the comparison, physical comparison in my hand of the size of these coils, one is very much larger than the other. Different uh, wire gauges are used. More importantly, the efficiency of the pickup is different. The inductance, the ability for uh, the coil to do its job is different because of the physical size. Like seriously, it's literally just because it's smaller is the reason it sounds different. The other difference is in the area of the string that it picks up is different. So a mini humbucker is gonna be narrower 
than the regular size humbucker, obviously. And because this pickup, the regular one, is wider, uh, you're going to get more lows. A mini humbucker, you're going to get a lot more highs. It's going to sound more single coily, and we'll talk about why another reason in a minute. This is going to sound more single coily. This is going to sound like it sounds like a humbucker because of the width and because of the size of the coils. Also, uh, in certain circumstances, because of the orientation of the magnet. Before we talk about that, let's get into the actual mini humbucker construction. So here's a picture of a mini humbucker. There's a couple of main differences. One is, you notice instead of having screws and slugs, it's got that hole in the middle where a bar goes. Okay, and a couple of different things can go there because we have a couple of different kinds of mini humbuckers. Mini humbucker versus Firebird pickup, for example, came up in our FAQs and in our comments quite a bit. That is because they are different. A mini humbucker in this photo, or in this breakdown, you can see the screws on one side and you can see a slug on the other side. But instead of having individual slugs like a regular humbucker, it has these ferrous metal steel bars that go in there. And then, very similar to a regular humbucker, a magnet sits underneath it like that, kind of, more or less. We would have another bobbin on the other side with the screws. And then you would, the screws would come down right here. And then you would have a magnetized metal slug. And then you would have magnetized screws on this side, on either side of that magnet in the middle. Unless it's a Firebird pickup. If it's a Firebird pickup, then they take both steel pieces out of the middle there are no screws, and all it has is an Alnico bar. So this is actually the magnet. Now what's interesting is, is when you move from steel pull pieces and use the same coils and then move it to a magnetic bar, you're gonna get even more kind of single coily sound because again, the efficiency, the inductance of the pickup, its ability to change the vibration of the string to an electrical current through inductance is different when you have a magnet in the middle versus you have screws or slugs or that metal bar that goes through there. When you look at the tone of a regular humbucker, a mini humbucker, Firebird humbucker, it goes probably in that order from all the way humbucker sounding to the mini humbucker, which is a little more single coily sounding, to the Firebird mini humbucker that is even more single coily sounding. That's basically the difference. Again, it has to do a lot with, first of all, the physical size, like we talked about, the physical size of the coil. And then as you change the core materials, it's gonna change, change the pickup as well. A lot of people will get in my comments and ask like, what if you change from 1018 to 1022 style steel, blah, blah, blah. You could get super bogged down in all of those details. But when you make more wholesale changes, like when you make more wholesale changes from the regular size humbucker style with the center poles like it has and the magnet underneath to the style that a mini humbucker has with that long slug and then the firebird to two long magnets when you make big wholesale changes like that it really changes the, so the style of the pickup the sound of the pickup and what you can expect to hear i'll build them either way like we build i don't have i don't think i have many humbuckers on our website but if somebody calls me uh, i'll build them for them and we'll do it either way. It's just a matter of your needs. What's really fun with a mini humbucker is to take uh, a mini humbucker and put it like in a neck position of a Telecaster, Firebird style one. Man, it sounds super cool because it gives you like more growl, but it's, it's. Uh, I mean, it sounds more humbucker, obviously. It gives you more power, but it's still, you can still get some really nice tele tones out of it too. I tell you what, before we go, we're gonna go ahead and go over a couple of questions from our comments. It's been a very lively place in the last few days. And if you have any questions about this kind of pickup stuff, let me know, put it in the comments and uh, we'll talk about it. All right, let's go over some comments. Daniel M says, question, is it possible to mix bridge slash neck pickup to have P90 jazz in a guitar with hum canceling uh, in middle position. I'm considering this in a jazz master, but wasn't sure if it was possible. So I'm not 100% sure what you're asking here, but when you put two single coils and you wind them uh, reverse wound, reverse polarity, and then pl put it, turn both on at the same time, uh, then they will be hum canceling. So you can do it in a strat, you can do it in a telly, uh, you can do it in a jazz master, as long as the pickups are wound that way. 90% of the time we wind 
every pickup that we make in reverse wound, reverse polarity uh, pairs so that we can, you know, so that you can have that hum canceling in the middle. It can be done. And if you need that done in a Jazzmaster pickup, let me know. Ace XX Oasis, somebody says, I've always wondered how a pickup winder such as yourself can make pickups similar identical. Obviously wind counts, but keeping winding similar enough that they sound the same as well as knowing what the customer is looking for in their custom pickups. What if it doesn't meet their expectations? What do you do then? That is a great question. So uh, pickup winding is all just about as much as in the hands as regular playing guitars. Um, is so you know if me and three other pickup winders sat down with the exact same stuff and tried to make the exact same pickup they would probably sound a little bit different there's where practice makes perfect honestly consistency between like if I make you one of our eight ball or center punch pickups and then you order another one and put it in another guitar is it gonna sound the same we do our best to keep them consistent and for the most part they are um, when we change wire spools, when we change magnet distributors or something like that, I mean, I try to do that stuff as least amount as possible to keep everything as consistent as possible, uh, keep the parts as consistent as possible. That's one big thing. But then just practice makes perfect. You just got to do it every day. And once you practice it enough, you know that you're getting consistent results. Then you can start selling them and they're consistent. That's a cool question. Really good question. Nobody's ever asked that actually. 78 tag says, you would make a great politician. You did a great matrix move on the sustain question. Why do you do even mention it? Great advertisement for FU tone, I guess. I do have to say that was one of the best explanations of pickups I've heard. Okay, so he's talking about uh, in a video, somebody asked about FU tone, uh, their hard mount to the body pickup uh, deal. And if that makes more sustain. Um, the reason I glossed over whether it makes more sustain or not is because does it change the sound of the pickup to hard mount it versus mount it in a pick guard? We have a video about that and theoretically yes, but see the minute I say something makes a big difference, then somebody says it doesn't. If I say something makes a big difference, then somebody says, oh, I'm going to go buy this product. And then when they get it, and then they say, well, Dylan told me to buy it because it makes a big... No, I didn't tell you to buy it. No, I didn't say it made a big difference. Uh, and that's why I stay out of that stuff. Does Adam make amazing stuff at FU Tone? Absolutely he does. And I like him. And that's why I would give him a shout out. I would give anybody a shout out in any of our videos if I, you know, we, we're not sponsored. I, nobody pays for this stuff. Uh, to this point, it would be great if we did. I'd like to have a coffee sponsor and I'd like to have uh, like a scotch sponsor would also be really cool just to keep us in supplies so our videos stay, you know, fresh and relevant. Yeah, I was going to get into all the negative comments that people put about uh, me drinking scotch in videos, but I'll just let that one lie. Uh, and say if, if that offends you for some reason that, you know, I can't control that. Uh, I can't control what you get offended over. Dollar is to it. Um, you know, that's it. Thanks for hanging out. This has been fun. What should the next video be about? Put that in the comments and let me know. And maybe we'll do it. I got a list like this long. So maybe we'll get to it is more accurate. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button, share this with all your friends. You know the drill. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.